Why do we use dating apps? There are a wide number of reasons from the infamous use of hooking up to the weird things like couples looking for a third to even people looking for legitimate long-term relationships. But I wanna break down some of the hidden aspects that cause me to cling to dating apps. Therefore, I wanna skip past some of the more obvious aspects of why someone might be using dating apps. I instead want to explore what was exactly driving my dependency on the use of dating apps. Hey there, welcome to my channel Eastbound. In my last video, I explained why I'm finally deleting my dating apps. And in this video, I'm exploring some of the hidden psychological reasons I've clung to dating apps. And it serves to establish a base for my next video, why I struggled to delete my dating apps. My goal today is simply to walk the viewer through some of these deeper and hidden reasons. When I came to the realization that my life would be better off if I decided to delete my dating apps, I found myself unwilling to go through with it. This puzzled me. Why was this seemingly stupid and easy thing difficult for me? So I decided to sit down and try to figure out why I was holding on to my dating apps and came across an interesting revelation. Dating apps were giving me tangible benefits to my life, but these benefits were far different than what I was expecting. The most interesting insight was that the benefits I was getting came in two forms. The first and more obvious kind of benefit that the use of dating apps were giving me was that it was adding to my life. But the second unexpected kind of benefit is what dating apps were allowing me to avoid. Let's break down the more obvious side first. What did dating apps add to my life? Now, there are plenty of things dating apps have added to my life, like friends, meaningful connections, and hookups. But I want to focus on the psychological additions found while using the app itself. The first thing is validation and excitement. Matching with people that you find attractive or interesting provides this small boost of temporary, albeit shallow, validation which is valuable to us on the days we feel self-conscious or lonely. This is equally some level of exciting. The ingeniousness of dating apps like Tinder is the way they've gamified online dating. Although swiping on people is now sort of a cliched feature found on almost all dating apps that come out, when it first came out, it was a genuinely unique and compelling concept. It turned dating into the strange sort of game. The rules were pretty simple, swipe left or right. If you both swiped right, then there was a match. Each match gives us that little release of dopamine and it's exciting. Sure, both of these aspects are fleeting, but nonetheless, these apps are designed to keep us swiping because the longer we swipe, the more ads we see and the longer we stay on the app and consider buying things like premium access to other features of the dating app. It's designed to be addictive. It's designed to keep us on the app. The second thing is potential. This benefit is a little bit more subversive. When someone's profile pops up on whatever dating app you're using before you swipe or send a like, what does that profile represent? In my opinion, two things. The most obvious is that it represents a person, but more importantly, it represents the potential of that person. Each new person you swipe through all comes with a new and unknown amount of potential. The potential to match, the potential that this person could provide you with some level of interest or excitement, the small potential that this person could possibly provide you with some level of intimacy or companionship. And should you swipe right and match, that potential is only increased. Obviously how realistic this potential is, is rather limited. When viewed objectively, the vast majority of the people you'll match with will never materialize into anything. But the concerns of realism is hardly at the forefront of anyone's mind on a dating app. For me, that implausible potential is ultimately the source of hope. Regardless of what your intentions are, you're using a dating app with the hope that each new person could possibly fulfill that intention, that the next new face and a seemingly inexhaustible stack of profiles could one day bring some semblance of fulfillment or happiness. I found that I was reluctant to give up this addicting game of seeking potential and unwilling to delete the potential I believed could be found in all the matches I had never even bothered to send a message to, regardless of how flawed that mindset was. I think what we find seductive is the belief that what we want is merely a swipe away and that we merely have to put in some level of effort or just bide our time until we finally find that profile and that stack of people. That's the power of dating apps. It's a detachment from the realities of traditional dating, which makes the belief of potential possible. All you have to do 
is swipe a finger. The last thing I found that dating apps added to my life was distraction. My impulses to use dating apps are normally triggered by two feelings, loneliness, and needing a distraction. Dating apps very much became a part of my procrastination app cycle. I would spend five or so minutes on each of my three dating apps before moving on to scrolling through Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube. Not only was it an amazing way to kill time, but it also came with all the benefits I've discussed earlier. If I felt overwhelmed by some task in my life or I was just simply bored, I would reflexively find myself on Tinder, Bumble, or Hinge. Next, I wanna tackle this second way dating apps were adding to my life in a way that I was not expecting at all. I found that by continually using dating apps, I was actually avoiding a couple of deeply important things. Let's start with the most obvious, rejection. The other great power to dating apps is the way they dilute the experience of rejection. When you swipe right and don't match or send a like on something like Hinge, there's no direct way of experiencing rejection. Perhaps they just haven't swiped on you yet or seen your like. Dating apps have made it so incredibly easy to create other reasons in your mind to why you didn't match. And even thinking about why you didn't match is quickly drowned out by the new face in your stack of people to never be thought about again. Even when you're left on red, this experience of rejection is pretty easy to shrug off. Since 95% of conversations don't even make it past a few generic responses, Plus, there's the physical separation provided by the app itself. I find that this kind of rejection is far preferable to any form of in-person rejection. Now, this next section of the things dating apps help us avoid is very much a reflection of where I'm at in my life. Therefore, you may not directly resonate with it, but let's still explore those reasons. By far the most important reason I've clung to dating apps is that I was avoiding the hard truth that maybe I need to step away from dating. Now, the exact reason I chose to step away from dating apps and delete them is something I talk about more in my previous video of why I'm deleting my dating apps. But the summary of that video is that for the last few years, I've been struggling with overcoming my depression and my past relationship trauma. In the two years that I've been single, I would have never thought I would still to this day be struggling with depression. The longer I've been single, the more instances where my depression got in the way of dating to the point where I had to legitimately sit down and question if it was even responsible for me to be dating. And here's the thing, by avoiding the fact that maybe I should step away from dating, I got to avoid two other additionally hard truths. I have a long and difficult battle with depression if I ever wanna to get to a place where I can even start dating, let alone have a healthy relationship. And the second thing I wanna avoid is that by deleting dating apps, I'm choosing isolation. Not only am I choosing isolation, I have no idea how long that isolation is gonna last. To completely pull away from the potential of anyone out there and choose isolation and choose to work on myself through something that is a very miserable experience. Dealing with depression is not an easy thing. And that's a difficult thing to commit to, a chosen isolation with no predetermined end to it. That's a pretty lonely and miserable experience. But nonetheless, one that I've kind of come to the realization that I have no choice to accept if I wanna better my life. Which brings me to this whole picture of why I personally cling to dating apps. As long as I continue to use them, I could stay in denial, that I could still potentially meet someone I could actually date, that my depression wasn't as bad as I feared, that I could void the hard work ahead of me. And that's the thing that struck me is that even something as simple as dating apps is this piece of this larger network of things that are holding me back in life. So the choice of deleting dating apps is more about cutting out one of these many things that are holding back the progress of me as an individual and a man. And that's the thing I wanna drive home in this video is that your use of something like a dating app or any other aspect of your life may not be as simple as you think it is. You may also have very strange and buried reasons that you may subconsciously be using something like dating apps to avoid much larger issues in your life. This brings me to a close on some of these more hidden and subconscious reasons why I think some of us cling to using dating apps. I hope that at the very least, this has provided some sort of reference point to examine your own buried reasons you may be using dating apps, even if you don't relate to all the different points I've brought up. I just wanna say thank you for spending time with me today and my content until we see each other again.